Wins uh, show. He's doing two nights here at a really cool venue. And uh, it's, it's about an hour and 15 minute bus ride away from Portland. So it's out in the boonies, but it's a McMenville's. And people who, who are from Portland and already know McMenville's, but it's a really uh, great place. It has a big hotel. It's known for uh, weddings and receptions, and then the, the big concert venue. It reminds me of Pine Knob in Michigan, Detroit, the old Pine Knob. Now it's named something else. So anyway, I'm kind of tired, but I want to, uh, I didn't do this book, Miss Emily, justice, I don't think. So I want to talk a little bit more about this and how it relates to a, a story in here from Dubliners, uh, Clay, one of my favorites. It's a short, short story. And mine is this edition of Dubliners I've had for decades, and it's all annotated up. You can barely read it. But uh, but I, 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 I'm going to read parts of it. And then I want to show you guys something I learned from... Uh, a Joyce and I've known for decades. His name is Sam Sloat. I forget what university he teaches at. He, he's got several books on Joyce and Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake. And he was in a Zoom meeting I've been attending recently, the past few months, uh, out of Dublin, Ireland. And it's uh, on Ulysses. They're rereading it in 88 days. But uh, I've missed a few, but the last one. It's 1 p.m. every Thursday in Dublin, which is 5 a.m. here in Portland, Oregon. So I get up and do that, and I'm glad I did. And I'll say maybe the best for last one. I'll show you something I did not know in some um, 40 years of reading Ulysses. I didn't know this, so I'd, I'd love to find out new things about it. It's a little tricky thing, but so let's talk about Miss Emily and um. Uh, Naula O'Connor's book. Now, you might remember me, I've been raving about this book of hers, Nora, Joyce's wife. And this is, a, it's called a Biographical Fiction. Because although it, it, it stays true to the historical facts, like a Richard Elman biography, you know, that's a, my favorite of Joyce. But it has a few things thrown in for dramatic license. I won't get into that too much, but I, I highly recommend this book. So after liking that book so much, I immediately read this one. And I was expecting a lot about Emily Dickinson, who I, I really like and adore and studied back in the day. But it was more about uh, this, the uh, housekeeper, more house mother that hires on from Dublin, Ireland. Her name is Ada, A-D-A. And it, it's just such a great book. It's how the beginning kind of starts out, and it ties in at the end, too. I won't tell you exactly what happens to spoil it, but it's good. So let, I made some notes in here. Um, first off, they, there's, they're having a party, and they play this game where they make a cake and put little, uh, like there's a ring in it, there's a little tiny baby, and uh, other things, and then when you slice it, whoever gets that piece of cake, you know, get the ring, oh, they're going to get married. So there's that, and Miss Emily intervenes in a family matter. It's on page uh, 49. Um, this is right afterwards, kind of, or the next day. Gathering a clutch of eggs, Miss. Or, Ada, what are you doing, I call. Gathering a clutch of eggs, Miss, she says, with a gallonness that all her kind use, though there is a certain sly element to it. You're licking them. I'm making sure that they're all right, miss. Mrs. Child says that if you hold the large egg, end of the egg to you, your tongue, and it feels warm, it's fresh. If it feels cold, it's bad. She shrugs. You're talking about a, a name of a baby, Martha. Yeah, Martha's a good name, good, solid name, all that. Yes, it is, a request from the Bible. 
But I think Ada is the most perfect of names. A palindrome, complex in its very simplicity. Miss Emily, you may as well be talking gibberish for all I understand you. Your name is the first, or your name is the same front and back. A-D-A. -A. I draw a line in the air, first forward, then backward. A-D-A. -A. But sure I know that, she says. Come on, get the basket and we'll bring these jars below. It gives me the all-overs going down there by myself. Okay, palindromes. Joyce like to use palindromes too, like, uh, um, Madame, I'm Adam. Madame, I'm Adam. A longer one that comes to mind is a star comedy by Democrats. So let me go back to uh, the story Clay in Dublinders. Where is it here? Okay, it's only like a four page story. Okay, so all of it throughout, so all throughout the story, Clay, the main character, whose name is Maria, gets, uh, she's acted upon very rudely in a bakery. She's uh, treated as a customer with a, so sorry about that, my video uh, memory ran out. So where was I? Uh, let's see, Maria's morning, yeah, she gets on a bus after going to the bakery and getting the special cake. Um, for a party with her nephews and she gets on, on the bus and is uh, ignored by some young people like won't give up their seats and let her sit down an old man does for her and uh, he happens to be drunk but that's okay he, uh, whatever she leaves uh, the cake on the bus so let's start there and she's at the party and uh, at the thought of the failure of her little surprise and of the two and four pence she had thrown away for nothing, she nearly cried outright. But they made her sit by the fire and uh, had a little drink. Now, Maria is kind of a spinster. Uh, I'm not going to get into the story. I just wanted to uh, note this uh, uh, Irish superstition, superstition and ritual of... Uh, cutting these uh, cakes with things in them. And the story is called Clay. And this particular, they call it a game. At a party, it has a lump of clay in it, too. And, and that symbolizes death. If, like, a, a ring symbolizes marriage, and, um, you know, a little tiny baby, a upcoming birth, then the clay symbolizes death. This story, Joyce is so rich with... Uh, you know, the way he writes every word is there for a reason. And then with these annotations of mine, I have another edition of Dubliners that isn't all marked up and crazy like this. I mean, I can barely even read it. Um, so they're going to do this little cake game, right? But Maria said she didn't like nuts and that they were, weren't to go bothering about her. Somebody wanted to crack some nuts. Then Joe asked, would she take a bottle of stout? And Mrs. Donnelly said there was port wine too in the house if she would prefer that. Maria said she would pr would rather they didn't ask her to take anything, but Joe insisted. So Maria let him have his way and they sat by the fire talking over old times and Maria thought she would put in a good word for Alfie. But Joe cried the God might strike him stone dead if he ever spoke a word to his brother again. And Maria said that she was sorry she had mentioned the matter. Okay, where are we going? He brings Bala Stout. The, next, the two next door girls had arranged some Hollow Eve games and soon everything was merry again. Where Maria was delighted to see the children so merry and Joe and his wife in such good spirits. You might have to take my word for it. Uh, one got the prayer book. Okay. The next door neighbor girls put some saucers on the table and then led the children up to the table. Huh. Blindfold. But one got the prayer book and the other three got the water. 
And when one of the next door girls got the ring, Mrs. Dowley shook her finger at the blushing girl as much as to say, oh, I know all about, about it. They insisted then on blindfolding Maria and leading her up to the table to see what she would get. And while they were putting on the bandage, Maria laughed and laughed again till the tip of her nose nearly met the tip of her chin. Now that's a line that appears in this short, short story several times. The very long nose and the very long chin. So she's got the look of a crone too. I'm going to skip through the, uh, already because I told you that just a certain uh, Irish games like that. Um, I could have read on to where, uh, surprise, surprise, Maria gets to the clay. I don't know if the two little evil next door girls had anything to do with that on purpose or not, but uh, everyone was all embarrassed and uh, Maria was embarrassed and then she had to sing a song. So anyway, that's the story clay. Oh. 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 I'm still uh, buzzing from Billy Strings. So there's that. Finally, which we've been waiting for. I have the wrong book. I have Phineas Wake. I'm looking for Ulysses. And where, if anyone knows Ulysses a bit, they know chapter 17, episode 17, Ithaca, which has the question and answers. Uh, Stephen and Bloom have returned from their night out in Nighttown in Circe, and they've recovered their wits somewhat at the uh, cab driver shelter. They have some refreshments there. And now they're going to Bloom's house, 7 Eccles Street. I've seen the door. It's at the Church Center in Dublin. But anyway, the last question on uh, the page of Ithaca is where, and then there should be a big, small dot, a black dot, round little dot, called a plunket, P-L-U-N-K-E-T, means full stop in German. Um, so it's not here in the Gabler edition, it's a misprint. And in, um, I think the 1962 edition of Random House, it's a square. Now, Ulysses is known for its uh, history of uh, messed up printing, printings and that throughout its illustrious career since 2022. However, the Joycean Sam Sloat the other day turned me on to this fact that on page 573 in the same chapter of Ithaca, that would be episode 17, the plunket does appear, in fact, on line 1030 between Damas and Jacob. And there it is, right at the top of the page. That's a, a printing error that ended up over there. So get your Gabler edition out, turn the page. 573, look at the second line on the play page, and tell me if you don't have a, a plunket on yours. Or if you don't, I'm giving up book two, and I'm going, I'm going back to the old country where I'm going to raise, I'm going to get married and have a, a small herd of sheep on a farm. If, if I'm lying, I'm dying. So that's it. It doesn't take too much for me to get excited. Ah, what have I been saying at, at the end of my videos lately? Oh yeah, something like, if you like these books, like, subscribe, make a comment. I'll reply to you. I mean, what else am I going to do? Look for pluckets and, and, uh, and little babies and rings and clay and stories. I'm going to look through that. I've got better things to do.